my dear Bella and Julie and all beloved children. You see, in this life, most of the reasons why people act, or fight, or risk their lives, is because of love. Is when they love someone. It can be the love from a mother to her child. It can be the love from a father to his daughters. It can also be the love between a man and a woman. But today, we'll see the love between a young lady and. A white bear. Now, because of this love, the girl was willing to risk her life, to travel across thousands of miles, to climb the back of a powerful wind, and to fight a troll, just to set her man free. The beautiful story is called "East of the Sun and West of the Moon." Now it was based on the original story by Susanna Davidson, and illustrated here by Petra Brown. East of the sun and west of the moon. The story is East of the sun and west of the moon, retold by Susanna Davidson, illustrated by Petra Brown. Now let's see what happens in this beautiful story. As you can see, the story has six chapters. Let's go through all of them. Chapter one: The White Bear. Far away to the north, where the land is covered in thick dark forest, and the wind blows bitterly cold, there lived a poor family. Late one afternoon, they sat huddled around the hearth. The firelight flickered over the children's faces. The boys were handsome. The girls pretty, but the youngest Asta was the most beautiful of all. As dusk began to close in around the cottage, there came a knock at the door. "Who's there?" called the father, but there was no answer. So the father rose and opened the door, letting in a rush of icy air. Before him stood a towering white bear. "I've watched your family all summer," said the bear. In a rumbling voice, and I am ready to make you an offer. If you give me your youngest daughter, he went on, I can make you as rich as you are now poor. I'll not give you my daughter," said the father, blocking the way. However poor we may be. But Asta looked into the sad black eyes of the great white bear. We barely have enough food to eat," she said, "and our clothes are turning to rags." How will we survive the winter? I will go with the bear. So saying, she stood up, collected a small bundle of belongings, and walked steadily to the door. "Don't go!" cried her mother. "The bear must be under a spell," she whispered, in her daughter's ear. "Don't worry, mother," said Aster. "I am not afraid." Aster climbed on the bear's back. "Keep a tight hold of my fur," he told her. Then, before anyone could stop him, he bounded away into the night. Chapter two: Inside the Mountain. While the moon was still high in the sky, Asta and the bear arrived at Craggy Black Mountain. The bear raised his huge paw and knocked on the mountainside. A door creaked open. Inside was a glittering castle, carved from stone. The white bear handed Asta a golden bell. Ring this if you need anything. No sooner had Asta taken the bell than she found herself alone in a grand bedroom. She lay down on the bed, but couldn't sleep. Clouds passed over the moon, sinking the castle into darkness. Footsteps echoed down the corridor. Asta peered out from her room and saw a man in the shadows. He dragged behind him a white bear skin, which gleamed in the moonlight. Each night after that, Asta watched the man until he disappeared into one of the rooms. Is that the bear, changed into a man? She wondered. She longed to see his face. The days rolled on. Asta had everything she could ask for. At each evening, the bear would come and sit by her side. She would stroke its soft fur and sing to him. The bear would rest his head on her lap. With a glimmer of hope in dark eyes, 
but Esther felt lonely in the castle, with the bear who rarely spoke. All day she would sit and wonder about the man who walked in the shadows. The white bear watched the roses fade from her cheeks. What is it? He asked one day. What do you want? I want to go home, Esther replied, for just one day to see my family again. That can be arranged," said the white bear. "If you will only promise me not to talk to your mother alone." The next day, they set out on a long journey with Esther astride the white bear's back. At last, they came to a large farm farmhouse. "This is where your family lives now," said the white bear. "I will leave you for a night and a day, but don't forget what I said, or you will do much harm to us both." "I promise." Esther was filled with happiness to see her family again, but before she left, her mother managed to get her alone. Esther soon told her about the man who paced the corridors at night, and how she had never seen his face. "You might be living with a troll," her mother said. "You must take a candle, hide it in your clothes, and light it when he's asleep." That night, Esther kindled her light. Then followed the man to his room. She held it above his sleeping form and saw the handsomest prince of her dreams. Unable to resist, she bent down and kissed his cheek. As she did so, three hot drops of wax fell upon his shirt. The prince woke up with a start. "What have you done?" he cried. "I've been bewitched by the troll queen, so I'm a bear by day and a man by night. I was to be set free if I could find a girl who would love me for a year." Without seeing my human face. Now I must go to the castle that lies east of the sun and west of the moon, and there I must marry the troll queen. Can't I go with you? Asked the bear. No, answered the prince. The troll queen has me under a powerful spell. I must go to her. Then I'll follow you there, vowed Esther. You can try it, said the prince sadly, but you'll never find me. Chapter Three, Golden Gifts. When Esther awoke the next morning, both the prince and the castle had gone. She was lying in the forest clearing, with nothing but the clothes she came in. I'll head north, Esther decided, because that is where the trolls dwell. Esther walked for many days and many nights, until her feet were sore and her legs were weary. She thought of her last journey on the white bear's back. The feel of his thick, soft fur and the speed at which he bounded along. I'll never find him. You shouldn't give up so easily," croaked a voice. Esther looked up to see an old woman standing beside a horse. "Can you help me?" Esther asked eagerly. "I'm looking for my prince. He's in the castle that lies east of the sun and west of the moon." "Aha!" said the old woman. "So you're the girl. I've heard tales of you and your search." I will help you. I'll give you my horse and three golden gifts. She went on handing Esther a comb, an apple, and a pear. Where shall I go? Asked Esther. To find a castle, ride until you meet the east wind. The old woman said. That is all I know. Esther climbed on the horse's back, and the old woman whispered in his ear. A moment later, they were off. Thank you, called Esther. As a voice was whipped away by the wind. Chapter Four: The Four Winds. The horse's hoofs pounded over the ground. Faster and faster he flew, and Esther clung to his mane. On a cliff top overlooking a rolling sea, the horse finally came to a stop. All around them, the east wind blew in gentle gusts. Can you tell me all the way to the castle? That lies east of the sun and west of the moon. Esther asked. "I have never blown that far," the east wind replied. "But I will take you to my brother, the west wind. He may know the way, for he is much stronger than I." Esther climbed on the east wind's back, and they roared away over the waves to the land where the west wind lived. "Brother," called the east wind, "do you know the way to the castle that lies east of the sun and west of the moon?" No," said the west wind. "I have never blown that far, but I will take the girl to the south wind, for he is much stronger than either of us, and has roamed far and wide." 
So they rode to the land where the south wind lived. Only the north wind knows the way to the castle, said the south wind, for he is the oldest and strongest of us all. I will carry you there. When they came near the north wind, Asta felt his presence in the frantic icy blast of air. What do you want? he roared. I carry the one who seeks the prince. In the castle east of the sun and west of the moon, the south wind replied. I know it, said the north wind. I blew there once, but I was so tired that for many days after I could not blow at all. If you are not afraid to go with me, the north wind went on, I will take you there. Asta thought of a prince with his sad black eyes. I am not afraid. Then the north wind puffed himself up until he was so big and strong he was frightful to see. Asta climbed on his back, and together they flew through the air, as if they would not stop until they reached the end of the world. Below them, storms raged over the oceans and ships were tossed like toys on the roaring waves. At last they had gone so far that even the north wind felt tired. He sank lower and lower until the waves dashed against Asta's feet. Nearly there, puffed the north wind, and with a final gust, he blew her onto an icy shore. Above her, east of the sun and west of the moon, rose the troll queen's castle. Exhausted, Asta crawled into a cave beneath the crags and slept. Chapter 5 The Troll Queen Asta awoke from her sleep to find herself covered in frost. With stiff limbs, she climbed the crags to the castle door. From behind a rock, she watched the, sh the trolls lumbering in and out. They carried buckets and mops, rolls of red carpet and yards of white silk. They're preparing for the wedding, Asta gasped, and she slipped inside the castle to search for her prince. But the castle was filled with trolls, but the prince was nowhere to be found. Finally, she came to a grand room lit by candlelight. There, on a great stone throne, sat the troll queen herself. She had string-like hair which she combed with long yellow nails, and a nose that drooped down to her lap. What do you want? she asked in a voice like grinding stones. I've come to see the prince, Asta replied. The troll queen beckoned Asta closer. First, you must give me something in return, she said. Asta looked down at her tattered clothes and remembered the old woman's gift. I could give you this golden comb, she said. The troll queen grabbed it from her with a claw-like hand. You may see the prince tonight, she snapped. He is in the room at the top of the tallest tower. That night, Asta rushed to the prince's room, and there she found him fast asleep. She shook him and called to him, but nothing would wake him. In the morning, the troll queen returned. Now get out of my castle, she cried. Aster spent the day in her cave. As evening drew in, she stood beneath the troll queen's window, playing with her golden apple. Give it to me, the troll queen called from her window. What will you give me in return? asked Aster. You may visit the prince tonight, the troll queen replied. But again, there was no waking him. And as soon as morning came, she was dragged from the castle by the troll queen's guards. With one last gift to use, Asta stood beneath the troll queen's window once more. Her golden pear glinted in the pale light of the northern sun. You may see the prince tonight, gloated the troll queen, in return for that shining pear. But it will be the last time, she added, for tomorrow we marry, and then he will be mine. That night, like the others, the prince slept like the one enchanted. Then it came to Asta how she might break the spell. Hidden within the folds of her clothes was the candle her mother had given her so long ago. She lit it and watched three drops of hot wax fall onto the sleeping prince. With a start, he woke. Chapter 6 The Spell Bricks You've come just in time, the prince cried. I was to marry the troll queen tomorrow night, but you found me before the year is out. Then from the stone turret came the sound of heavy feet. Hurry, we must flee, urged Aster. The troll queen is coming. 
As she spoke, the first light of dawn pricked the night sky. I am still a bear for one more day, roared the prince. Turning, Asta saw he was a white bear once more. Climb on my back. As the troll queen opened the bedroom door, the bear charged past her down the turret stairs. <coughs> Come back, she cried. Never, snarled the bear. Stop them, the troll queen ordered her guards. But the trolls were no match for the giant bear. With one swipe from his paw, he scattered them like leaves, then bust through the castle door. Together, Ashton and the bear galloped to the icy shore. There, a boat bobbed on the water. In one bound, the bear leaped on board. I thought you would need help escaping, said the north wind. All this time I have been resting. Now I will take you home. For months, they journeyed south, the north wind blowing the boat as gently as he could. And this is the end of the story. East of the sun and west of the moon. Mm -hmm.